everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library for, at our downtown location at Maine, and I'm here to do another book talk. So as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, we have an election coming up. Yay! So I thought today it would be a good chance for us to talk about civil engagement and books about people interacting in our democracy. So I have a small little collection of books for kids in about about the fourth to sixth grades, give or take a grade. And I'm going to start strong with a book called Strong Voices, 15 American Speeches Worth Knowing. Each of the speeches in this book are uh, have an introduction written by Tanya Bolden, who is a pretty well-known uh, young adult author who writes a lot of historical fiction, really, really well-researched historical fiction. I think she's written some, his, um, some historical nonfiction as well. Uh, it's illustrated by Eric Velasquez, and it's got a foreword by Kofi Roberts. Um, this book's really good. Um, about half of the people in the, featured in the book are people of color. Unfortunately, only three of them are women, but it's still a pretty good cross-section of people. Uh, the introductions are chock full of really excellent historical context. For example, one of the first speeches in here was Patrick Henry's give me liberty or give me death speech that helped kickstart the Revolutionary War. And it mentions how Patrick Henry compared the way the British were treating the um, American colonists. He was comparing that to slavery. Well, he himself was a Virginian slave owner. So that's an interesting sort of comparison to add. And it's in that little introduction. Likewise, it talks about how a lot of people know of Sojourner Truth's most famous speech as the Ain't I a Woman speech. Well, the version of that speech most people know have Sojourner Truth sounding like she grew up in the Deep South, which in reality, her first language was most likely Dutch because she grew up in, I believe, New York, and she did not speak with a Southern accent. So she very likely never said the words, ain't I a woman? There is a most likely far more accurate version of that speech that was of printed, printed earlier on than the more well-known altered version of the speech um, reproduced in this book. So there's some really great historical context in this book, um, and it's pretty short, as you can see. So if you're a teacher or you're just looking for some good uh, historical tie-ins here, this is a good option. It's a good mix of presidents and civil rights figures and also uh, Lou Gehrig's, is it Lou Gehrig's? Yeah, Lou Gehrig's farewell to baseball speech, of all things. So that's a good option right there. For another nonfiction option, this is, I never know what to call these, it is a graphic novel style nonfiction um, collection of very short sort of snapshot biographies. It's called Noisemakers, 25 Women Who Raised Their Voices and Changed the World. Uh, there's some really cool women in here, science, artists, explorers, athletes, politicians, activists, all sorts of people. Most of the women are white and American, but there are at least 11 women of color, which is pretty cool. The kids are, who are reading the books are encouraged to actively compare themselves to the women in the book in these um, count all the things you have in common with sections that are in the intro to each person. Every, um, every entry is written and illustrated by a different woman or non-binary author and illustrator, which is also really cool. Their short little bios are also included in the back. So this is a cool way to get a snapshot, like I said, of some other very cool women who refuse to let people put limits on what they could and could not do in the world. So that one's cool. 
So this last nonfiction selection is called We Are Power, How Nonviolent Activism Changes the World, and it's by Todd Hasek Lowy, or Lowy, perhaps. Um, and it does a really great job of explaining the power of nonviolent protests. As you can tell, this one's a little thicker. I would probably recommend this one to kids in about maybe sixth or seventh grade. It's a bit more text heavy, but it still has some good um, graphics and some good pictures in it. It's really excellent back matter. It has a great uh, basic introduction to some really powerful nonviolent protests in the world. It starts strong with Gandhi and his salt march and it gives some great background information as to um, his how he came up with his particular philosophy of nonviolence and how other people felt compelled and drawn to pick up that mantle later on. Um, since it does focus really strongly though just on the power of nonviolent protests, it does tend to overlook some other things that were going on at the same time as nonviolent protests. So for example, when it's talking about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s portion of the Civil Rights March, it does not mention things like the Black Panther Movement that was happening concurrently and also had an impact on the Civil Rights Movement. Um, and since it's talking about all of the awesome stuff that the suffragists were doing that were nonviolent, it also doesn't mention the racism that was inherent in the suffragists movement. So the information that's in there is really good and solid, but it doesn't include everything about them. Um, also, you know, it talks about how Gandhi's nonviolent protests were excellent, but then it also leaves out the parts about the partition of India that happened after Britain left India, which did lead to an awful lot of bloodshed. So it's a great place to start. It's a great introduction and it's a great place to get going. Um, but of course, you can't fit all of history into one book. Um, but it's a great place to start learning. It's very accessible. It's a very great place to um, to get going. One of the th chapters that I particularly appreciated was the chapter about Cesar Chavez. I, I don't know about you, but they never covered that in my school. And so I love learning more about that um, in particular. So that's all in here. And like I said, for about grade six plus, I would say for that. Now, moving on to our fiction section over here. This was probably my favorite one that I read for this particular book talk. This is Act by Kayla Miller. Uh, this is the third book in this series. I think the series started coming out last year. The first book was Click, the second book was Camp. You don't have to read those first to appreciate this one, though um, you'll know more of the background characters if you do read those books. They're not necessary. Um, but the main character, Olive, is very popular in her school. She's a very likable person, so she knows and gets along with most of the kids in her school. So if you care about knowing all of the background characters, it never hurts to read the first two books first. In this book, Olive realizes that not all of the kids in her class can go on the class field trips because not all of them can afford it, and she feels that that is not fair. So she tries a couple different ways to rectify the situation. She tries a petition, she tries doing a sit-in, and she ultimately winds up trying to run for student council so that she can run a bake sale at her school to help finance field trips. And it's a really great school and friendship story, but it's also a really great way to show how kids can stand up for things that they believe in and enact small, local, but meaningful change in a very realistic way. Um, it's a really great book. And there's some really fantastic back matter. Um, not only is there super cute art, but there's also protests of the past. Olive, there's a montage where she's doing some research in the back, uh, in the book, and this is some of the stuff that she was looking up in the back. So there's little mentions of that and some suggested readings in the back for kids who want to know more about it. Um, it talks about, Kayla Miller talks about how she, her process for making the graphic novels, so those are always fun additions to any book. Uh, I'd say that this is a really awesome option for any Raina Teldemeyer fans, which I know there are droves of them. So 
I think this is her best book yet. I think it's got the plot with the most oomph behind it, and this is already a series that circulates really well at our library. So go ahead and give this one a try. Another great graphic novel option that features a school election is Twins by Varian Johnson, and the artwork was done by Shannon Wright. This is Johnson's first graphic novel. He's also written The Great Green Heist and a really great book that came out a couple years ago that's a mystery that the name of which is completely escaping me right now. Um, but he's a fantastic author. Um, this book is a little bit more of a family and coming of age story than it is one about civil engagement, but it's still a really fantastic book. It's told mostly from the twin Maureen's point of view, but you see the her sister Francine's uh, stands on things by the end of the book, which is lovely. Um, again, it's great for friends of Raina Talgemeyer. The artwork is just lovely. Um, I think a lot of kids will, will really relate to this. It's about growing up, finding your own voice, finding your self-confidence, finding your own independence as a person. Um, it's a good book. The last book I'm going to mention, we don't actually own it at the library in hardcover, but you can get it through our Overdrive um, app. You can get it as an ebook, and it is Kent State by Deborah Wiles. This is definitely an older book. I'd say seventh grade plus. If you have a particularly sensitive reader at home, I'd say even older. Kent State was a pretty uh, big thing, and people died at it. So if you have a kid at home that's gonna be upset by that, then maybe even older than seventh grade, there is some strong language uh, in it as well. So full, fully warned there. This book is told from multiple points of view, uh, from people across the political spectrum. And it's like they're having a conversation or an argument where they're explaining what happened at the Kent State shootings. And the voices include students, counties, National Guard members, and Many of those voices will sound really familiar to readers from political discussions that we're having today. And the way that it's written makes it apparent how relevant history is, even now. Because a lot of the discussions that were happening then are very similar to discussions that we are having in the present. Um, that was the thing that struck me when I was reading the book, um, was how many of those voices haven't really changed. And yet in some ways they really have. It was it was a really fascinating book. It was really, really well written. It's very quick, it's very short. Um, the prologue really sets it up really well and the back matter, especially where she talks about how she did the research for writing the book is excellent. It's I could definitely also see this being a school assignment, but the scenes where the bullets start flying are, they're not sensationalized, but they do describe the carnage. So like I said, if you have a more sensitive reader at home, I could say maybe hold off until they're a little on the older side. But I definitely wanted to showcase this book because it did happen right here in Ohio and it's incredibly well written. So thank you very much for your time, guys. I hope you found something on this table that is of use. If you have any requests or any suggestions for book talks I do in the future, please uh, send us an email or write it in the comments. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.